Hello everybody, welcome to Virtual Club Live this Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. I'm Josh Peterson. We're broadcasting live right now from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin counties in Kennewick, Washington. Wherever you're watching from, thanks for joining us today. We've got a great show coming up today on Virtual Club Live. Adrian is back with another breakdancing tutorial. This time he's going to show us how to do a turtle freeze. This is a great way to end your routine in a fun and stylized way. Plus, staff at the main branch in Pasco braved the snow and freezing conditions to help deliver meals to those in need in our community. We're going to take you to their latest food distribution event. And do you have any leftover Valentine's Day candy? Jesse's going to show you a fun way to put some extra treats into a new dessert. We're going to be making delicious chocolate stars in just a few minutes. But first, did you enjoy the snow this weekend? Yes, we certainly got quite a lot of it. Did you go sledding, make snowmen, or make an igloo, or are you tired of it? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the snow and had some fun. My kids, as you see them here, they spent all weekend jumping around in it, digging and making caves. <laughs> Having a lot of fun. They just need to remember to put their snow clothes on before jumping in, of course. Over at the Kennewick Club, members there actually helping to shovel the snow in front of the club to make the walkways there safe for other members and families. A big shout out to these kiddos for going above and beyond to help out. Very awesome. And uh, today, right now, the sun came out a little bit today. It's still right there. You're looking uh, at a live look outside of our virtual club studio right now in the beautiful downtown Kennewick. If you had fun in the snow over the past couple days, we'd love to see. Send us some pictures of your family or friends enjoying the snow. You can send us those pictures virtual at greatclubs.org. We'd love to see. We'd love to share the fun with everybody else. Well, if you're stuck inside the house because of the snow, we got a fun activity for you to stay active indoors. Adrian is here with our latest break dancing video tutorial. In this video, he's going to show you how to do a turtle freeze. Check it out. Hey, Adrian here. I'm going to be showing you guys a new move. It's called the turtle freeze. Now let me break it down. So you're going to go on the floor and you can start on your knees or your feet, whatever is comfy. You're going to take this arm and you're going to find a good spot on your right side. For me, it's my right arm. If you're left-handed, right with your left hand, it's going to be on the left side. Since I'm right-handed, you'll see me put my arm on my right side all the time. Okay, so now you can kind of see this is above my belt. It's like a comfy position for me. You're going to have to go through trial and error to kind of find that sweet spot to where it doesn't hurt. So you're going to start off in a push-up position with your legs spread. You're going to put this elbow on your right hand in that location we were talking about. You're going to go ahead and go down. Now, I know you're all familiar with the teeter-totter. So my head is the end of a teeter-totter. My feet are the other end. My head's going to go down. My feet will go up. Okay. So it kind of had this motion going on. Okay. So now when you get comfortable and you practice that enough, you feel like your wrist is strong enough, you can start jumping right into the freeze. So you can place your hands down, jump. My head doesn't have to touch, but if it works for you, it's fine. So go ahead and send us your pictures and videos. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Adrian. That video is actually our 14th break dancing tutorial. You can check them all out on our website. Just visit greatclubs.org slash virtual club. Very cool. And this break dancing freeze, it is the new virtual club challenge. We want to see your best turtle freeze. No break dancing experience required. Just give it a try. Hold that pose, take a picture and send it to us at virtual at greatclubs.org. The submission deadline is the end of the month, Sunday, 
February 28th at 11.59 p.m. We're going to announce the winner of this new challenge in two weeks on Tuesday, March 2nd at 4 p.m. So have some fun with this. It's okay if you've never break danced before. Give it a try, take a picture, and send it over to us. The winner of this challenge is going to get a $25 gift card to CG Public House and Catering, uh, an amazing way uh, to spend an evening for, for a great meal there. So send in those pics. We cannot wait to see your breakdancing skills. Well, if you know of a family member, friend, or a neighbor who could use a little cheering up right now, tomorrow is a great day to show them that you care. Tomorrow, Wednesday, February 17th, is Random Acts of Kindness Day. Now, this is a day to celebrate and encourage random acts of kindness and the whole pay it forward mentality. Absolutely love that. If you are looking for a way to participate or a unique way to spread some kindness, We've got you covered. We're digging into our virtual club video vault to bring you a video we first aired back in May. Jesse is here to show you how to make kindness rocks. Check it out. Hi everybody, it's Jesse again. And so just wanted to talk to you guys about a really cool project that you can do to help bring some kindness and joy to your neighborhood and the people around you during this a difficult time. So have you guys seen this thing about kindness rocks? What they are is people are collecting rocks normally out of their yards and stuff like that. They're washing them and then they're painting them and they're creating these really cool designs on them. And you can create whatever you want. Then they are taking them around their neighborhoods and they're hiding them for people to find. Kind of like a scavenger hunt. And you can hide them in anywhere you want mailboxes you know for our mailmen maybe in somebody's yard up on their steps something that will just brighten someone's day as soon as they find it and so they're really fun and easy to do and pretty simple all you need is rocks and some paint now you're going to want to use basic acrylic craft paint just because any tempera or water-based paint like that will come off the rocks and you don't want that to happen and so using your rocks and your paint, you get to be as creative as you want, make whatever kind of designs. And if you want to come back in with like Sharpie markers like we did here, after it's all done and write words of encouragement and kindness words, you're more than welcome to. So I would love to see your guys' rock collections. So start painting some rocks, take pictures of where you're hiding them, and let's see if we can find them. And let's share some, share some awesome kindness and words of encouragement throughout the Tri-Cities. All right, guys. Love you all, and we will talk to you again soon. Bye. All right, thanks for that project, Jesse. A great reminder and a great way to spread some kindness tomorrow or any day of the year. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're heading to the Pasco Main Branch, where staff there brave the snow to deliver boxes of food to families in need. Stay with us. The future is uncertain for millions of young Americans facing a competitive job market. Additionally, businesses are reimagining how they work and serve their customers. How can young people prepare to meet the workforce challenges of tomorrow? They need safe spaces and positive mentorship today. That's where Boys and Girls Clubs of America come in to level the playing field and help our youth stay on the right path in the midst of change. Mentors and activities help develop essential skills like communication, creativity, and critical thinking. Club experiences spark interest in careers related to STEM, business, the arts, and more. Together with our partners, clubs empower teens to explore volunteerism, extracurriculars, and certifications in their communities. They can even access financial literacy programs, internships, and local jobs. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is developing today's youth into tomorrow's leaders, innovators, and problem solvers, ready to not only meet challenges, but exceed all expectations. Learn more about our workforce readiness programs at bgca.org slash workforce. Welcome back. Black History Month continues and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America continues to highlight the history of black people across the club movement. Now that includes notable alumni and young people continuing the legacy of black achievement. 
The National Organization is shining a light on these amazing people all month. We've got three amazing people to highlight today, starting with Denzel Washington, who was the first African American to win multiple Academy Awards. Uh, before Denzel was known for his acting, he was a club kid attending the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon in New York. Very cool. Ruth E. Carter was the first African American to win an Academy Award for costume design for the film Black Panther. Drawing pictures was one of the many activities Ruth enjoyed while attending the Springfield Family Center Boys and Girls Club in Massachusetts. And NFL referee Mike Carey, the first African American to lead an officiating crew in a Super Bowl. Mike joined the William J. Oaks Boys Club in California when he was eight years old. Absolutely amazing. To learn more about these incredible stories and highlights, visit bgca.org. Well, it's time now for one of my favorite parts of our weekly show, clubs across the country. Get in the car, train, put your rollerblades on or get in the airplane. We're heading first to Nebraska. Youth at the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Midlands have been honoring Black History Month with a variety of educational activities, making posters, participating in trivia and doing crossword puzzles to learn more about influential Black Americans. Next, let's head to California to the Pinedale Boys and Girls Club. Youth there received an amazing donation. Comcast stepped up to provide youth with computers so they can do their schoolwork and continue on their journey of achieving academic success. And finally, let's go to Georgia to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Mitchell County. Youth there getting into the Valentine's Day spirit with some fun and handmade cards. Very, very creative. All right, well, back home in the Tri-Cities, we're gonna stop first at the main branch in Pasco. Staff members there, they braved the snow and the freezing temperatures last week for a drive through food distribution event. They handed out boxes of food to families in need outside the club. The turnout was a little lower than they anticipated because of the snow, but that did not stop these amazing staff from handing out meals. Some staff loaded up the vans to take food to families who stayed home. Absolutely incredible. Over in Prosser, our club there completed a big renovation project of their kitchen. You're seeing the before picture here. Now the after picture, an amazing transformation of their kitchen. A special thank you to Danny Kang at Eastside Market for stocking the newly renovated teen center kitchen with supplies. And back in Pasco, teens at our main branch there learning about the importance of values in their latest leadership program session. Teens said empathy, respect, loyalty, and honesty are core values that resonated with them the most. We're gonna continue the local focus at the Kennewick Club. Youth there working on their artistic skills as they created some fun Valentine's Day themed art. Lots of painting and creativity, really nice work. And in more Valentine's Day fun, kiddos at the Club Discovery Preschool in Pasco also having the fun. They made these neat heart-shaped bracelets out of pipe cleaners and Fruit Loops look fun and delicious. And preschool kiddos at our Columbia Basin College site also having some Valentine's Day treats there. They made their own personal pizzas. I love that. And they got to eat them as a snack. <laughs> really cool. All right, well, finally, in local updates, we want to highlight an amazing club youth at Maya Angelou Elementary in Pasco. Janessa is making and selling masks and scrunchies to raise money for foster kids. She's put together a business plan for her handmade shop called Kid for Kid. And all the money she raises will go toward purchasing backpacks for foster kids. Now, if you want to order a mask or a scrunchie from Janessa, you can email Sid Mercer right there at sydney.mercer at greatclubs.org. Love this story. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, more fun continues. We've got a fun dessert for you. If you've got some leftover Valentine's Day candy, well, we can put it to good use with this new chocolate treat. We'll be right back. Today's world is really driven by technology. You see it everywhere without having the knowledge to use it. You are really missing out on a lot of opportunities. The best thing about technology is creating exposure for young people to understand what's possible in both their world and in education. That's the great thing about my future.
Welcome back. Valentine's Day may be over, but do you have any leftover Valentine's Day candy? I know we do at my house. Well, Jesse is here to show you a fun way to put some extra treats into a new dessert called Chocolate Stars. Check it out. Hi everybody, I'm Jesse, and I'm so excited for you to join me today as I make a fun chocolatey treat with you. So the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need your silicone mold. Now make sure that this is one specifically for candy. You can also get them in other types, but they don't hold up the heat and will melt. So make sure it is a candy mold. It can come in any shape or size you want. Today, I wanted to do some fun stars. And first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in some toppings. Now, when you make these candies, the bottom part of your mold will actually be the top part of your candy. So I'm just gonna come in and add in some different variety of toppings to each one of my mold sections. All right, once you have all your candy sprinkles and toppings put into your mold, next you're gonna take your candy melts and put them into a microwave safe bowl. I'm gonna microwave these first at 30 seconds, give it a good stir, and then continue for 15 seconds, stirring in between until they are 100% totally melted. I'm gonna go ahead and use probably about half of this back. All right, my chocolate is all melted. Now remember, it's super hot, so please be careful. Use a pot holder and adult if needed. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this chocolate to our molds. And you're gonna wanna, you don't have to fill them all the way up, fill them up as much as you would like. You can use a spatula to help pour it into your little mold areas. All right, once you have your chocolate all in your mold, just go ahead and take your mold, give it a good little shake, a little tap, just like that. That'll help get all those air bubbles out, but also get the chocolate settled down towards the bottom where our toppings are. Once you've got them tapped out, the next step is simple. We gotta just put it in the refrigerator. You're gonna wanna set it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. This is gonna give the chocolate enough time to harden and also solidify in your molds. Once they're nice and cooled down and hardened, you can actually take them and just pop them right out. Once you've popped them out, you've got some amazing chocolate candy that you can give to your friends and family. I hope you guys really enjoyed this project. I know I had a blast making it. And until next time, guys, bye. All right, thanks, Jesse. Those chocolatey treats, absolutely delicious as always. Well, yesterday was President's Day and all clubs here in our organization were closed, but staff members still hard at work as everyone attended an all-day virtual training session with some uh, great informative meetings so staff can help serve you at a higher level. Now, staff have faced challenges during the pandemic but have rose to the occasion to serve youth in incredible ways and it's been inspiring and we want to share some highlights with you. In this video, our executive director, Brian A, speaks about how or our organization continues to do whatever it takes to serve youth during this pandemic. Boys and Girls Club, as well as our community, weathered some storms in 2020, but it's a new year and we're excited about our ability to move forward in serving kids right where they're at. What we've learned is that kids are in different places. Kids have different supports, different relationships, different resources. The number one job of clubs is to meet kids where they're at, to learn who they are, to get to know them, to encourage them, and then to help them move towards a brighter future. That is our work in 2021. As COVID continues in our community, we move forward in serving more kids every day. Our clubs are open. They're there to meet the needs of kids and to meet the needs of families. And we're always looking for ways to serve kids better during the pandemic. Every day, kids are in club learning. They're in club growing. They're in club being encouraged. That is our work right now to help them reach their great future. And it's happening every day at our clubs. I think our community wants healthy young people, 
healthy young people that are ready to contribute and give back. But one thing we know, especially in light of our mission, is that we're here to serve all young people, but especially those who need us most. Our job right now is to provide more attention, more resources, more time, more relationship, more encouragement to those young people who need us most. And by doing that, we're gonna ensure that there's equity for those kids that we serve as we come out of the global pandemic. So I was on a walk yesterday with my kids and I ran into somebody as we were out walking. We started talking. And at the end of this conversation, they said, thank you for all that you're doing to serve kids in our community. And I had to respond back and say, I didn't do anything, but we have a team of staff members who did. And that is amazing to be able to share with our community that since day one, not a week off, not a month off, not two months off, since day one, our staff responded creatively to meet the needs of kids. There is a fire and that fire was COVID-19. And they didn't run away from that fire. They didn't just stand outside and call for help. They went in to individually rescue kids and make a difference in the lives of those that needed it most in our community. It makes me incredibly proud to know specific staff members, specific staff stories that inconvenienced themselves personally, stretched themselves personally in order to serve kids. And lives are changed because people were willing to run into the fire rather than run away from it. So inspiring to see and hear all that, absolutely amazing. If you wanna join our incredible staff team at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties, now is a great time. We're hiring for several open positions. If you have a passion for youth and wanna help them reach their full potential, we encourage you to apply and join our team. You can go to greatclubs.org employment for more details and information. Well, the next time you buy a cup of coffee, a book, or groceries, you could be helping local youth right here in our community in need. The Lo uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton Franklin Counties has launched a new fundraising campaign called Share the Love. Uh, this is a round up your change campaign where you can link your debit or credit card to donate leftover change up to the next dollar so the Boys and Girls Club uh, can receive that uh, funding assistance. So the next time you buy anything, you can help support local youth. Very cool. To find out more about this program, you can go to greatclubs.org. All right, well, finally today, we want to highlight our generous friends at McCurley Integrity Dealerships for their incredible support of clubs. The Erkies Family Branch, Kennewick Club, received a generous check from Mason McCurley here uh, to help ensure a safe and positive environment for youth to learn and grow during COVID and beyond. Thank you for investing so much in our community's future. And thank you for joining us today for Virtual Club Live. To see more content at any time, you can follow us on our social media pages, YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Just search Virtual BGC BFC. That's Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties. You can also check out our website for a full list of all of our videos. We now have more than 160 videos. Head to greatclubs.org slash virtual club to see them all. Have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. I'm Josh Peterson from the Virtual Club, from all of our staff. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week for Virtual Club Live.